Hey y'all, it's Julie. Um, I thought I'd do a little haul video um, for resale and then um, I have some junk journal stuff at the end to show. Um, <clears throat> I COVID cases are starting to really pick up here and so I thought I would run out while I could um, just in case everything closes again. So I um, ran out the other day and grabbed some stuff, so I thought I'd show it. Um, I've been dyeing paper, so please excuse my hands. Um, got a whole bunch of coffee paper dyed and stuff because um, I'm getting some orders, so I've been working on that. But um, I thought I'd start with these bottles. They are just so interesting. Um, federal law provides the sale or reuse of this bottle. So these were done right after um, prohibition between 1935 and uh, 1968 is when they stopped doing it. Um, I may turn these, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna list them or if I'm gonna turn them into like moon water bottles. Um, this one's really cool. It's like an Art Deco decanter. Um, this one's really neat too. It's got this like luster to it and then like a wax stamp area. This is really cool. This one is a ginger ale bottle from 1935. So I thought that one was pretty cool. And then this is like an antique medicine bottle and it's got this really cool luster. It's by Owens. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's pretty cool. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that. Um, I picked up this cute little guy. Um, I already have one. I have a set of three different ones. These are from the early 80s. And then my mom was getting rid of hers. And I was like, nope, I'll take all of them. So it's this cute little Santa um, candle holder, cast iron. It's like stained glass. It's beautiful when it's lit. So I already have one. So that one will probably get listed. Um, and then in here, let's see, I found a huge, huge amount of binding tape and seam tape. So <clears throat> I think they're all vintage, mostly, um, really some really awesome colors. I'm definitely gonna, I have a really cool old sewing set. So I think I'm gonna sell some of these in there, but um, I'll definitely be keeping some to use because these are great in journals, especially like these um, thicker bindings. <clears throat> like if your book, if you're using a novel for your junk journal, I have found that these wider tapes are great to reinforce um, the back of the book. And, you know, in case like, you know, you cut it with a razor or something, those are, these are great for, for that, these thicker ones. And then I found this really cool metal thread holder. Um, it's got a patent on the back. It's wood, I just thought it was cool. And it had like a whole bunch of really cool wood um, spools, among other things in there. <clears throat> Found this cool little leather case and I just like the case and then I open it and it is full of cufflinks. Um, I don't know if this could be used in a journal um, somehow for like the closure, but look, look at that. It's ridiculous. My kids are home if you hear them. This has got some cool luster on it too. Almost like black moonstone. So yeah, I grabbed it. It wasn't very expensive and I mean, there's some pretty cool pieces in there. Um, this is adorable. This is definitely um, going on resale. It is a Singer sewing box, accordion box. Um, 
so it opens all the way up and it had some stuff already in it that I'm going to leave little scissors and stuff and then you close back up and then this pulls out and it is full of vintage little spools so I picked that up because I found that Singer stuff is just good for resale. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so this is kind of what I do to um, help supplement. And then some of you will be very excited about this. Giant box of buttons and keys and there's... Some stuff in here isn't worth much, but there are a lot of China buttons in here. And I've already pulled some out. I need to clean them. They're filthy. It actually came... Where did I put it? So it was like labeled as a certain amount of pounds. And in it was all of this. Tons of needles and like sharps. I like stabbed myself a few times. But some of it's cool, carefully, like little metal pieces and things. Um, most of this is going to get tossed because the pens and stuff. But there's some cute st stuff in here that I could maybe use. Um, but yeah, so that was all in the buttons. It was, I have to pick through because there's some in here. But yeah, that was a bit rough. But I did find quite a bit of um, China buttons, which is like one of my favorite antique buttons. And then also I love, but I feel like this shadow is just awful. So mother of pearl carved shells. Um, <clears throat> and then so China buttons, they come in, this is like an inkwell with the um, color around the outside. And then this is Calico China. And this is my favorite. If I can get it to focus. It just has like designs around it. I have some really cool ones. I just, I don't know what it is about them, but I lo just love them. And then there's like bigger ink wells like that. Plenty of white china buttons that are, you know, easy to find, but I still love them. I use them in journals. Um, yeah, so there's lots of really, really pretty candles and or candles, geez, uh, buttons in here. Some really fun mother of pearls even some um, antique. So these are Victorian picture buttons. I swear one of these days I'm gonna get my collection out and show you guys. So that's cool. Um, these are check buttons, which tend to be um, pretty collectible. A lot of people like the glow buttons from the Czech Republic. Um, so I'm not sure about these, but if not, they are still cute. And then I really liked these too. Mother of Pearl's great. Um, in my last video, I mentioned I had a Nancy Drew book, and I thought I would pull it out. Um, it is going to be for sale in my Etsy store uh, when I get off, get done with this video. Um, tied it up with sari silk, but let me just show you how cool is this book. It's a 10-year-old girl who had it, and she, like, talks about where she was born, her brother's name, her parents' name. It's just so cute. 1942, and the paper is beautiful. So this is going to be, I'm going to put this up for sale, and if it doesn't sell, then I'm going to do the Riverdale Journal, because I keep thinking about it, and I think that that could be really fun, different thing to do. I got this book, um, and it's really old and it is super fragile, but I will, I'm going to use it in journals 
or in paper packs that I sell, but look at the aging on this paper. I'm like afraid to turn the pages because they're breaking like, you know, really old sheet music does and it just cracks. Um, but I just, I love it. So that's gonna get taken apart, I think. Binding is maybe, maybe usable. I'm not sure. I'll have to see what it looks like when I take it apart. Uh, this is a really cool copy of um, East of Eden. Um, I live in California, like I've mentioned. So there is like John Steinbeck stuff everywhere, especially in the Bay Area, San Francisco, Monterey Bay. Um, I mean, there's even a wax museum in Monterey for him. Um because that's where he spent most of his time writing. So this book is a first edition, 1952. Um, it's got that old library smell. It's signature bound. I'm definitely gonna sell this, I think, because I just, I don't have the heart to take apart a first edition book, even though it's in rough shape. Um, it's not beyond repair. The back it is pretty good. The only main problem is this here. So it, it can be fixed if it, you know, I can use it in a journal if it doesn't sell, but I'm at least going to give somebody the opportunity to pick this up because it's the first edition and I just, I love books. I have a hard time sometimes. Um, I got this cute little Betty Crocker book. If you can... <clears throat> Just cute little papers, nice and thin. And it's got the cool old colors, so grab that because I'm gonna work on that Betty Crocker cookbook at some points. And this is rough, but it has some decent okay stuff, I guess. Um let's see here. The rest of the books. Grab this one. Um because it's a library book. Um, I like to grab those. I can use the pockets and journals. I know they sell them like on um, Amazon, but like I like the aged ones that have the cards, you know, been checked out a whole bunch. Um, this book is from 1954. Um, yeah, more paper. <laughs> I grabbed this just because it's aged and it was cheap. Um, this I thought was adorable. Like really want to do something with it. Um, look at how cute that aging is on that paper. It's brand new. Um, and well, not new. It's never been used. Um, wages by the hour. So let's see here. Yeah, it's, this is definitely old. So that's cute. Definitely gonna use the paper. I love that it's green. Um, and then I will maybe even use the cover because it's super cute. This is a super, super old book. I loved the inside art. The binding's already coming off. I'll have to see how bad it is when I actually take it apart to see if I can use this or not. Um, that's my three-year-old over there. Uh, um, that's the author. Beacon of Biographies of Immigrant Americans. Um, published in Boston in 1899. I think I paid a dime for this. So it's cool because like it's definitely aged paper, but it's smaller pieces, which is sometimes nice to have. You don't have to tear a giant page out and cut it down. Um, found some cute um, little uh, vintage cards in a pack. So some of this will have to be get covered, but like this out the border is really pretty. Um, I thought this one was beautiful. 
to someone indoors. I like laughed when I got it. <laughs> We're all stuck inside. I mean, my county is like, it just went to the purple tier today. So we are like, a we're close to lockdown again in California. Um, so yeah, just some cute. And then this was in it. Creepy little baby. I love it. It's going in a witchy journal and then some Valentine's. I might, I think I'm going to start putting together. I do have some vintage like Valentine's day stuff to put in a pack on Etsy. Um, I got some more embroidery linens. Um, I didn't love this one, but you know, I have a hard time leaving these at a thrift stores. Got this cute little one, perfect for a pocket. And then I got two of these hand embroidered napkins that seem to be new. So these all four corners will get used on this piece. I've been looking for trim like this for a while and I've looked at Joann's. I've not been able to find like this eyelash trim, but this was a quarter and I loved the colors. So I grabbed that. And this was just a little, I haven't run up in this yet. Let's see. Cute little cut circles. I wonder if somebody did these with a machine. Or maybe I'm just really bad at cutting fabric. It's little strawberries. Oh, they were gonna make maybe a heat pad with these. Hmm. Some little pink squares. It's cute. Oh, I love that one. Christmas pajama plaid. <laughs> oh, that one's cute. I'm sorry if the shadows are messing this up. It's quite gloomy, about to storm here, so. But I love rain. So this is another little bag of China buttons and other buttons that I found. Um, I am collecting antique buttons with moons and stars and I'm going to have somebody embroider a moon and then I'm gonna sew in all my moon buttons. So some of these are ones that will be used for that, like these two. Um, there's a few more of the stars. And then these are other examples of um, china buttons, so stencils. Um, if they have this kind of a design, it would be a stencil. Um, and then the ink wells, like I showed you, and then the calico is like, has more of like the printed design on them. But they're like pre-1930s, so I, I just adore these buttons. So those are personal stock stuff. I got this really cool retro uh, double deck of cards. I've been selling them like single swap for junk journals, and I'm starting to run low. So I was very excited to find a new deck or a couple new decks. Um, I think the backs are really fun. They're definitely aged and used. Um, <clears throat> so, love those. A little bit different than all the other ones I've found. Um, so this, this was 10 bucks and I couldn't leave it. So I think I'm gonna resell most of this and then some of it I will take apart and use but it just has so many cool, how pretty. And they're all complete, they're not broken like most of the ones you would get at a thrift store, they're all complete. I wonder if that's amber. There's a lot of shells in them, so my kids will probably take those because they love shells. Like these would be beautiful on a, um, like a tassel, you know, beads. So there's definitely stuff in here that I'll use and stuff that I will not use. <laughs> but I thought $10 was like a decent price for all of this stuff. My kids will have fun digging through it. Some of it might 
get sold in a lot. These are from Hawaii. My cousin has some of these. Um, so yeah, this is just like a whole bunch of there's earrings in here, or just tons and tons of vintage costume jewelry. So some of that might get sold in a lot. I'll probably use some of it. Those beads are really cool. Hawaiian beads. He wears them all the time. That Pono spirit. <laughs> okay. And then I got a giant stack of graph paper for a dollar. Um, that will get dyed and used because I'm running out of mine. But I have just have a couple more things. Let's see. Got these. They were already written on, but they can be fixed. So put them this way in a journal. Um, nice envelopes. So with writing space. So that's perfect. Um, my last name starts with a G. So I grabbed these because I'm always running out of notes to send people. To thank you when they buy stuff. Um, this book is super cool. Polit Political Quotations. And it is from... I love when they have books have rice paper, don't you guys? I don't know what it is, but... Yep, Elena's already taking the costume bag of jewelry, told ya. Copyright 1883. And the paper is so thin and it's just quotes throughout the whole book about every kind of topic. Love, home, all kinds of stuff. And then I found this cool vintage belt. It's really soft leather. The other one's up here. I'm sorry, I will end this soon. <laughs> so this cool vintage belt. And got this cute, cute vintage, vintage, vintage apron that I'm going to put up in my Etsy. I love, honestly, I love it though. It's so cute. It's got a little, little pocket here. And then I grabbed, I grabbed a bunch of pot holders. I've already sold a set like this in my Etsy store. Um, they're all hand done and really cute. This is vintage, but like new old, you know, it's like perfect. So I've got this one super cute. I think I'm going to keep this one. And a whole bunch of them, all hand done, really cool and great condition. Little vintage wood one. So these are all going to be going up in my Etsy. This one's really cool. It's like double knitted. So those are cool. I got these. So I just got a plastic doily from the 50s in to do the dyeing of, or do lace dyeing on my paper because I'm, you know, I like to have as many paper packs as possible and different different stuff to choose from. So these aren't technically plastic, but they feel like, they don't just feel like paper. They feel like they have some coating. So I might try these. If not, you know, it's not a huge loss. Um, and I believe that is it for the day. Um, thank you for... Um, watching and I hope you guys are all safe and taking care and um, I'm going to try to get another video up soon um, of uh, our paper dyeing process and we'll try to get that up soon. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well and I will talk to you soon. Bye.